All right guys, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the carburetor, the new carburetor on the 1600. It should be easy since this car is so old, it may not be easy, I don't know. Hopefully we got the right lines, hopefully we got the right filter and everything. So we ended up with, let me stop this and I'll get you in there. All right, so we ended up with, was this red line carb from Weber. And this is not, Jesus, that much junk. This is not like a two barrel or a, what we call stacks. It is a factory replacement with a little more, little more upgrades added to it. So it's gonna make a little more power than the stock. We're not gonna have to put a different manifold on it. We're not gonna have to change a bunch of crap and it's not going to get horrible at fuel economy and be hard to tune and all that kind of stuff. So we wanted something that's gonna fit on the factory air cleaner, hopefully this does. And I'll put a link, well, I'll put a link in the description, but nobody's gonna have this car to put this on, so, but I'll put a link in there anyway. It was about a hundred and, I don't remember, $168, I believe. And it's just a little guy. Just a little guy. And this one looks like it has electric choke. I'm guessing that's what it is. Libby looks nice and clean. Not Chinese, an actual Weber made in Spain. You can see how small, I mean, it literally looks like a motorcycle carburetor, uh, but it's not. So we have our adjustment screw, we have our throttle stop screw, our mixture adjustment. I think that's pretty much about it. I mean, it's not like it's uh, super complex, a couple of vacuum lines on it. And that's pretty much it, man. It should be a real easy swap. It looks like that should fit right on the factory air box. They give us a couple things, some gaskets. They give us a wire for the choke. We'll have to source some power for that. So they did give us some fuel line, probably 5 16 Yep. So I did guess they got the right fuel line at O'Reilly. He's got two foot. I don't know how much of this is bad. I'll try to get all the rubber replaced them under the hood where it goes into metal. We got this fuel filter, which is actually for a mower, but I couldn't find anything else. Uh, and I wanted to have, have a clear one. This one has a screen in it. So we could see if we get any particles from the tank. We could always change this out, no problem. It's like super easy. But for right now, I wanna see what comes up in there. And the whole drive behind this whole swap is to get the car mobile. Now, are we gonna sell the car? Well, that's kinda unknown yet. All right, got the camera set up. Let's go ahead and get up in here and see what's all going on. Might sit up another, a little more light on it. Set that off in there like so. A car like this is gotta be so careful not to damage anything. And those hoses, they're just hard as freaking steel, boys. I mean, it's hard as steel. So we got our big vacuum line coming from here, going to the distributor. Not big, but a vacuum line. Then we got some linkage. Put that out of the way. That fuel line there is really soft. That one's soft. That one's not. So I got some stuff plugged off on here on the manifold, so somebody's been deleting something. We got the linkage, this return spring here. Let's kind of let that dangle. We got a couple straight slot screws there to take off. Oh, that screwdriver's broken, that's what the problem is. <laughs> a 
throttle cable off. Not quite sure what that linkage there even does. That's just a clip holding on. Yeah. I'll have to make sure and grab that here in a second. So that's it. So was that not electric choke? There's the manual choke cable. I'm not quite sure. That wire goes to the coil. I got some, I don't know what size those are. Some 12 mils. We're gonna get us a pair of pliers. We're gonna pull the hoses off and this thing's off. Definitely gotta replace that. It's like cracking as we're taking it off. There it is. You take it out the door and dump the fuel out of it. And here we go. So we got both the carbs right here. And that top of that is a little bit bigger and I hope that's not gonna cause a problem on our air filter housing. And it very well might Like it very well will. I know we got a grommet in there. Let's see if I can pop that out and show you guys real quick. The air filter housing has a, a fat grommet. We should be able to pop it out and make the new one fit in here. But you can see, hopefully, you can see the carbs are pretty much identical. Other than just being bigger, all the hookups, we're gonna have to take this bracket here off and put on the new one. But other than that, all the brackets are all the same. All the hookups are all the same. And this old one was leaking fuel out of the, the pump, the plunger, out of that gasket it was dumping out. I think that's the only spot it was leaking. Is it leaking out there or is it leaking out where that rod goes through. They're probably at the plunger. So could we fix that with the rebuild kit? Yes, we could. And I'll put this in the box in the trunk, but the rebuild kit was well over $100. And the new up, updated Redline Weber, um, I think it was like 168 or something like that. It wasn't really that much difference. So I'll have to just go ahead and get the new one. Hopefully we can just put it on adjust the mixer screw a little bit and we're ready to roll. All right, give her a little, a little bit of that action going here. 
So we got everything done. Um, there's a couple things. Here's the grommet that come out of their cleaner and see how fat it is. So we hooked up, we put new fuel on. I gotta put that clamp on there before I forget about that. Got new fuel on, on everything. Then, um, all right. New fuel line, hook the vacuum line up, hook the return spring up, the manual choke. I know this is some kind of preheat, electric preheat situation or what's going on there or the sensor. That hooks right up to it. We have this main rod. So that's actually the throttle itself that comes up here, has this funky clip, all goes on there, all that's on there. Um, like I said, we took this out. It's just a microscopic amount away from going on here. Let's just line this heifer up real quick. Uh, so close. <laughs> Let's have to ever so slightly touch that with the grinder. I mean, ever so slightly. It just nearly, it feels like if I just push hard enough, it'll go right down on there. Super, super close, super airtight. Everything else is done. That's got to be... That's gotta be squeezed. That's not making enough connection. Like that. There we go. That's pretty much perfect. New fuel filter. Um, I think the pump and everything's okay. Just the fact that it was leaking off and bleeding off, it was causing an issue. So let me, Sure that's not gonna hit anything here. Let that ride. Let's go ahead and start the car up next and see what we got. Let's go and give her a little squirt here. We're going to turn this fan on, I think. It's fixing to get pretty stinky. And hopefully that'll get the pump pumping enough. Let's back her outside and let her warm up a little bit. All right, so we still got a little bit of that action going. Probably need some spark plug wires and points in the distributor. Um, I got the carburetor adjusted pretty good. Got the idle adjusted pretty good. Still a little backfiring. Like I said, we might need a little bit of timing put in it too. Um, I don't know. That's I mean, there we go. Um, kind of a funky video because it's not on a car that anybody really has. So, but that's putting the carburetor on. Everything seems pretty good. I think we're gonna go and order some ignition points, 
some spark plug wires and take a look at the timing on this thing and maybe a cap and rotor. It's just not very much. I think that would make it a lot better. Um, to conclude this video, am I gonna sell this thing? I probably should. There's a lot of money kind of hanging there on it. I could be using it for other stuff for the channel. Um, how much do I want for it? It's pretty much 100% rust free. I don't know that you could find another one like this anywhere in the US that hasn't been totally restored. It looked like the high book value on it was like 29. I think it should be worth at least 20. I mean, I don't know. Uh, one that's redone brings 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars pretty regularly, and usually they're not this spec. Um, so let me know what you think. If any of you guys are interested in this car, might be willing to turn loose of it. Um, definitely use the money we get for it to reinvest in the channel for more cars. I just don't know if I'm going to commit to rebuilding this thing or want to do some more of the shop and some more of the house. Um, time be limited. So let me know what you guys think. Who knows? Thanks for watching. Have a good day.